and welcome back to another manga review. I am the rat, and this is The Rat's Nest. Last time on Rat's Nest, we looked at Arrivederto Volume 11. It was very good. Uh, I say last time. Uh, I know there have been one or two chapter reviews since then, which is something that's going to be starting. If you're interested in Chainsaw Man or One Piece, uh, shameless plug. <laughs> but today, we are tackling One Piece Volume 2. It is, essentially, well, the beginning of Orange Town was the end of last volume, and the end of Orange Town will be next volume. This is essentially Orange Town, right? Buggy the Clown, Boodle, all that good stuff. When well, let's just get right into it, because why not? We get at the beginning here, we kind of got it at the end of the last volume a little bit, but we get the first meeting of Luffy and Nami, and it's very, it's always very interesting with early One Piece to go back to these character introductions and to be like, okay, how did they meet each other? And then to compare that to like, you know, where they are now. It just, it just, it really goes to show their growth. And it, it's, it's always really cool to see that. Especially with Luffy and Nami, Nami being one of Luffy's most loyal crew members, uh, their intro. And obviously we have uh, Baratier and Sierra Village and then Arlong Park before she officially joins the crew. But she is the third straw hat. And if you disagree with that, you're dumb and your opinion is wrong. And I hate you. After this, we get the formal introduction of, uh, of a, a vital character to the rest of this story. This is where I will go ahead and give spoilers for One Piece through chapter 1054, probably. I don't know if I'll touch on 1054, but I might. The Void Month is finally over. But I'm still rereading One Piece, because why not? It's a good series. We get the introduction of none other than Buggy D. Clown, the most fearsome Yonko to ever roam the Grand Line in the New World. <laughs> Buggy, uh, his introduction is very interesting because he's portrayed as a very evil pirate, and he, Orange Town and Buggy's introduction specifically are some of the most retconned pieces of One Piece. You have the map of the Grand Line, when really it's just a map to the Grand Line. You have Buggy and how the Roger Pirates didn't know about Devil Fruits, which is just quite impossible. His whole backstory with Shanks is also very ambiguous as to what what is it really like, where Buggy obviously isn't a good person, but later in the story he seems more of like an idiot as opposed to like a, just, just a straight up evil person. It, it, his portrayal is very interesting, and I think definitely part of that is I don't know if he was ever intended to come back. Um, and I don't think after this we hear anything else about him until Impel Down. And so I, I really don't know if he was ever intended to come back. And so, you know, he's just like, okay, this is a pirate captain. And on to my next point with, with, my, with my super organized notes is that he has the Chop Chop Fruit. It is a, a paramecia, just like Luffy. <laughs> And it allows him, essentially, it lets him, like, split up his body. But it also, it also, like, makes him immune to being slashed, like, with a sword. So, Buggy, now an emperor, versus Mihawk, who is theoretically, in my mind, an emperor-level fighter. Um, <laughs> Buggy wins. <laughs> the chop-chop route is interesting in that with Buggy being an emperor, Obviously, Emperor is a very political position and not based wholly off of strength. And Buggy definitely has the political position. He keeps failing upwards. I like the conspiracy theory that Buggy awakened his Chop Chop Fruit, which allowed him to split other things, including atoms. Because I find the idea of Buggy just being able to set off a nuke whenever he wants <laughs> very funny. <laughs> Buggy's introduction. I mean, you know, it's solid. You know, it's Orange Town. You, uh, Orange Town is it's classic, uh, classic early One Piece. You know, it's not like it's not like Arlong Park, but it's you know, it's fun. And to see Buggy and kind of you know, early One Piece is like the Devil Fruits are like still like mysterious, and so it's cool to see like Buggy and Luffy's power be like, how does this interact with like people who are like quote unquote actually fighting. And this is actually leads right into my next point, which is it's interesting how early One Piece kind of, yeah, with that early depiction of Devil Fruits, how there's a lot of focus on, like, Luffy's, like, like I'm a gum gum man, or Buggy saying, I'm a chop chop man. And they, they ate the fruit of the, the gum gum tree, you know. 
that, that kind of stuff. It's just it's very interesting to hear like all this terminology that was used in early One Piece. Uh, kind of like with last episode with Luffy being called Anchor by the by the Shanks pirates, right? Red-haired pirates. And we might get to see a comeback of that because Shanks and Luffy are theoretically meeting in a chapter eventually. <laughs> so maybe we'll get a callback to that. But that, that kind of early terminology is always very interesting to me to see kind of like, okay, here it is. Here's how it changed. We have a bit of, of Luffy and Zoro fighting and just, you know, getting to see their coordination. It's I, I love Luffy and Zoro. Um, I, I wouldn't call them deuteragonists. I've been reading Hunter Hunter recently. Uh, check it out on Goobers and Screens. At the time this airs, it's not there yet, but it will start airing on Goobers and Screens. So check that out. I really like Luffy and Zoro as a pair because it's just it's a swordsman and and very unconventional fighter. And they're very fun together, and their personalities mesh very well, I think. We also get to see Luffy captured by Nami. And this is the kind of first thing, like, okay, is Nami, like, an antagonist here? Like, reading this for the first time, I knew that Nami was going to be a straw hat. I just didn't know exactly how she was going to get there. So her being, we get to see, like, her her, her trickster side, right? You know, she's, she's the cat burglar. Um, we get to see her trickster side. She she captures Luffy and is like like oh here he's the one. He's like let me join your pirate crew, and we get to see uh, Buggy like okay then kill him <laughs> with Buggy D Clown special attack Buggy bombs, dude. If Buggy bombs make a comeback whenever we see Buggy again as an emperor, dude, <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> and just with that, we have Nami basically being like like i like i don't want to kill him we also this is just more of kind of what we see in arlong park where nami quote unquote turns traitor where she's a she's a good person she doesn't want to kill luffy but luckily zoro steps up and he he helps him and this is something that uh we get to see that zoro can't touch the cage which is very weird to me because i'm just you know used to zoro cutting the horn off of onigashima <laughs> And being such a threat that Kaido has to dodge away from it. Um, and so to see that, like, he can't cut the cage, like, it's like, oh, yeah. That's right. Right now, he's just, like, a good, like, swordsman. He's not, like, advanced. It really it, it made me remember how early One Piece, and I wrote this note a tiny bit later, I had, like, normal challenges, right? Like, a cage, like, I mean, Luffy could destroy a cage now. I mean, just, just easy. And so it, it's cool to see that kind of, like, challenge and like luffy fighting a lion like it's just a lion like that's all it is it's just it doesn't have any special powers he's just a lion uh the the early challenges of one piece being like normal i think it's you know whenever you're reading through it the first time you don't notice at all you're just like yeah of course he can't cut metal but then after rereading it it's like it's like it's good to get back to like like it, it makes you again realize how far the straw hats have come since the very beginning Next, we have, I already kind of touched on it, but the introduction of Moji, who is uh, uh, YC-1, Yonko Commander-1. Um, obviously, one of the strongest characters in the series that we've seen so far. And just to kind of see him this early was really shocking for me. Because, you know, Yonko Commanders are typically saved for a while. You know, Pedro Spero, who is technically Big Mom's YC-1, we, we, we get to see him relatively early on. But but Katakuri, who's a YC-2, and is probably, in my opinion, stronger than Pedro Spero. Um... His, his his reveal is definitely waited for a while, and definitely the, the fight between him and Luffy was was hyped up a lot more than Moji versus Luffy. Um, but again, this is just their first meeting here, and so there's probably going to be a rival reborn, um, if not some kind of respect. I don't think Moji is the type to respect Luffy uh, like Katakuri was, but just to see an Emperor fight, a Yonko Commander one, it's very interesting. I wrote here, uh, Luffy, easy solo, YC one, no diff. Um, it's, so dumb. it's so dumb. One of the best things about rereading Orange Town after 1053 is knowing that Buggy's an Emperor, and technically Moji is, is YC1, the Yonko Commander 1. <laughs> also, before I get too much off on my, on my Buggy D Clown tangent, you get Chocho. You know, I love Chocho. He's a, it's just a nice little backstory. There's, there's a lot of heart in Orange Town with Chocho and Boodle. Um, you know, I think it works very well. It, it goes to show that that even at this, Oda writes in, in an extra page here, he was 23 whenever he wrote this, which is 
ridiculous to think about because we just celebrated the 25th anniversary of One Piece. Uh, to there, there's a lot of heart in, in Orange Town, specifically with Chocho and, and Boodle, and it's it's really nice to see, you know, that even like a, a minor arc like this, there's stuff like that, and you know, it is it is it's very nice. It's not like it doesn't feel shoehorned, you know, and I I don't know how much of that is my bias as a One Piece fan talking. Uh, but I really enjoyed seeing it, Chocho and, and Boodle's backstories and all that. We also, we get to see Nami. We get to see Nami and her respect for Luffy grow whenever, at the, whenever you know, Moji, um, he, he burns down Chocho's pet food store. And at the end, we see Luffy going up to, to Chocho and, and Nami's like, you stay away from him. You know, she, she hates pirates at this point, you know, understandably, as we know. Uh, but she hates pirates. She doesn't like Luffy. But then she sees Luffy save Chocho a box of dog food and, like, encourage him. And this is kind of a, a turning point somewhat in Nami's character to where, like, before it's like, yes, she's a nice person who didn't want to kill this random stranger she met. But she's starting to warm up to Luffy for the first time. And obviously later we know her, her loyalty towards him with her amazing moment in Wano with Ulti. Um, but it's very cool to see um, this kind of, like, first, like, Maybe this guy isn't so bad, even if he is a pirate moment from Nami. Obviously, Nami's time to shine is our own park, and that will come eventually. But this this is just a very nice moment with, with Nami. We also then kind of get some backstory for Boodle and them, where they built Orange Town. I completely forgot about that. I remembered once I read it, but yeah, I completely forgot that Boodle and them built Orange Town from the from the ground up. And so it's you know this is again like I said, there's just there, there's heart here, and I really appreciate it. Boodle goes to confront Buggy and he's like and he almost dies again just getting to see kind of you know earlier where the devil the devil fruit powers are like rarer and so it's cool to be like like yeah no this is kind of a hopeless situation like how how do you beat Buggy right um but then Luffy obviously he frees Boodle and then and then knocks him out and saying he's in the way this is another moment whenever I was first reading it that made me really appreciate One Piece and Luffy specifically as a protagonist uh because it's like okay like he's He's, you know, Luffy is a good guy, but he's not like a, like a good guy. You know, he's, you know, he's like, he's a good guy. He's not like a good guy, you know? Yeah. Kind of, kind of, you, you get it. It's kind of like going from Hunter Hunter, which is the example I use because I'm reading Hunter Hunter currently. Um, and we get to see first it was Kabaji versus Zoro. Uh, so Zoro YC2, um, mid diff to, I don't think it was ever high diff. It was mid diff because of the, the Emperor he sustained fighting in end the injury he sustained fighting an emperor earlier. <laughs> Obviously, we get to see Zoro's um, strength come back in that he, he solos King, high diff, admittedly, but he does solo King. And then after after the Zoro Kabaji fight, which is just, you know, some good early One Piece East Blue action, we get the beginning of the clash of the Yonkos. Monkey D. Luffy, Straw Hat Luffy, and Buggy D. Clown, the bombastic clown. <laughs> I, think that, I think that's the translation they went with. <laughs> Buggy being an emperor is so much fun because we can meme Orange Town to oblivion now. Be like, dude, remember the Yonko fight, bro? That Yonko fight was insane. But I really am looking forward to rereading uh, Buggy versus Luffy um, in volume three of One Piece. Um, or, you know, East Blue, it's it's fun. It's a fun reread. It's fun to, to go back on all this stuff and to just see how far everyone's come and kind of the stuff that's changed. Um, you know, the first, like, quote-unquote, big arc that's, like, one piece is Arlong Park, and I'm very much looking forward to getting to Arlong Park. But that is a while in the future. For now, thank you all for watching. If you're this far in the video, there's obviously something you like, so maybe consider liking and subscribing. Up next on the docket will be Rising of the Shield Hero, book 19, um, and obviously some One Piece and Chainsaw Man movie reviews sprinkled in there. With all that said, I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye